Hello, my name is Christopher, a fellow disciple of Jesus Christ, and welcome to the No Other Gospel channel. This is the program that endeavors to help fellow believers have a better understanding of biblical truth. We expose teachings that are not in line with the gospel and contrary to God's word, and we discuss current falsehoods and how they may relate to past heretical messages. Last episode, I gave my quote-unquote word for 2022, and if you didn't see that, I encourage you to go back and take a listen. In short, I noted that many of the prophecies that you're hearing today, the prophetic words for 2022 here at the beginning of the year, are not from the Lord. And we reference passages from Jeremiah and Ezekiel where it says that, though they come saying, thus saith the Lord, the Lord has not sent them. This episode, we're going to take a look at some of these early prophecies, quote unquote prophecies or prophetic words from 2022. Uh, just did a search on YouTube and found some of the big names and we're just going to hit a few of these. It might take a little bit longer of an episode to go through some of these. We're just going to hit a few minutes um, and go through a few of these videos and uh, we're going to speed them up a little bit. One, so we can get through some of the, the meat, so to speak, of them um, and get through a number of them, but also for copyright laws, we're just going to speed them up and change them a little bit now. Uh, we're doing this, obviously, we're, we can replay these because we're using them to critique and evaluate and to judge and to comment on them. So we're going to play um, them for that purpose. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's dive right in. Let's bring up um, the web browser here, bring up YouTube. We're going to start with Jeremiah Johnson. This, if you don't know Jeremiah Johnson, he gave prophetic words about Trump which he was totally wrong, I had to apologize. He said that the prophet of prom prophet had agreed that Trump was gonna win, and he did not. Um, here he's back, um, still in ministry, still doing prophetic words. Here's some of his prophetic word for 2022. So when Alan called and said, hey, January 1st, 2022, 10 a.m., I thought, yes, Lord, on the first day of a new year, I'm going to deliver this message. So. This graphic is very prophetic uh, for what I'm going to talk with you about, you know, at a terminal at an airport, those of us who travel. Terminal, it's not a great way to start a 2022 prophecy as we're going through COVID. I don't think that's a good idea. Frequently, who likes uh, airport watching? You get in there and there's just so many different folks out there. There's so many different nations. You know, there's so many different types of people at an airport. And I truly believe that the body of Christ is entering into a new era. A new era. Ah, what a fancy word that means nothing. New era. You hear that all the time from these prophets. It doesn't mean anything. Where there's about to be a mass convergence of streams and generations and... Oh, generations, good word. Ethnicities and just... Ethnicity is good word. So I got a terminal. You could show up at one gate. And you've got a whole different crew of people. You go to the next gate and they're headed toward a different uh, a destination. God is birthing new movements. Birthing new movements. He's prophesying things that are vague and have no specifics. So it sounds like if there's a new movement that started, he did it. He said it. He got it right. Just vague, cookie cutter prophecies means nothing. In the earth, God is raising up uh, emerging leaders in the earth. God has in generations past done that. God's always raising up new leaders if you're listening to him. But we have a real opportunity to try to work together. All right, let me skip ahead here. Let's go to uh, just... Skip ahead somewhere, minute, maybe a minute ahead, and let's try keep going. Happy New Year. All right. I've got a new book that comes out this month, The Altar, Preparing for the Return of Jesus Christ. This is my 12th book. Some guy. Wait. He's just starting, and he's he's hawking his book straight out of it. He's got 12 books. You shouldn't read any of them, but here's a good way to start a sermon or a prophetic word from God by hawking your new book. I mean, Lou Engle wrote the foreword. John Kilpatrick wrote the special introduction. If you've been following us uh, over the last couple of years, chapter one begins in my living room on election night. And so I believe that- So he goes through some of those things where he failed his prophecy, I guess, in his book. Just skip ahead and listen to a few- The Lord has released a, a massive transition for our ministry, Charlotte, the Queen City. I believe that there's a bridal revival that is coming to the Carolinas. So Charlotte's a Queen City, so now he's kind of invented a prophecy based on uh, a monarchy theme. God is going to kiss this region with special kisses. And so we're just here what? to be a part of it, excited about that. And then um, Jesse and Parker Green, would you guys stand up? I just wanted to, can we give these guys a, a round of applause? All right, let's, uh, let's do the next one. Let's go on. Didn't get into a lot of meat or any good, good prophetic words there. Let's listen to Chuck Pierce. Now this was in end of 2021, but he was starting to talk about the new Jewish year 
5782. If you listen to the last episode that we did, we talked about how that's basically numerology and it means nothing and you can't extrapolate from that. We're going to see a little bit of a pattern from that here. I'm going to start a little bit in on this one. There's a lot of wealth out there that the Lord's ready to bring into his kingdom plan. Wealth. He probably wants you to donate to his ministry, probably. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was. Right. But he couldn't see because of the crowd because he was real short. Right. In stature. He ran on ahead of the crowd. He climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus reached... So far, so good. That's the story. Good. It's the place. He looked up, and this is what you have to understand about Jesus. He already sees you. What? You might... He's calling us to a higher place. Wait, he's calling us to a higher place because Zacchaeus climbed a tree? This, it's a good prophecy misapplication of words here. Fairly typical. But really what he's doing is seeing, will you climb up there? Because he already sees you. The Zacchaeus climbing a tree to see Jesus in the physical is not a spiritual analogy for us to rise to a higher place. This is a misapplication of scripture done so often in the charismatic movement. He already knows you. He's just waiting to see how you're coming up like John or Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't know him. John did know him. To really see into your future. He said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for today. I've got to go to your house. Now, that's really what the year's about. He has to come to your house. So we took a passage of scripture somewhat at random, and now we're applying it. Jesus had to go to Zacchaeus' house. and means in 2022, Jesus has to come to your house. <laughs> now, uh, it's a visitation. I like those people in the front row there waving their hands. It's like, yes, yes, come to my house. In year, he's coming to your house. That's the, that's the, that's the uh, name of this prophecy here. The year of the Lord's visit visitation, as if... He won't come to you other years. This is the year, 5782, 2022, as if God doesn't uh, speak to you through his word every day or it's not around in your heart because you accept him as your Lord and Savior, as if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you every moment of the day already. But this is the year, apparently. He's coming to where you are, your house here, here and your place. This is classic charismatic misdirection as if you need more of the holy spirit or part of the holy spirit that you didn't have stating that somehow you have some sort of inferior holy spirit or not enough holy spirit in you already based on the, the gospel that you've received it's not good enough and that's what they're saying he he's coming to visit the 13 colonies this year 13 colonies. he's coming and he said so zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed jesus with joy you know, have you ever noticed sinners sometimes are more excited about him than we who know him? They all began muttering in discontent. They were mad because he was going to visit this sinner. Right. This tax collector, this rich man. Right. He's gone to be the guest of a man who is a notorious sinner. I love that. Notorious sinner. Everybody say notorious. Why would you all say That's what that? what the word means. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, See, Lord, I'm now giving half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I'll give back four times as much. Everybody say we're in the season of payback. Wait, we're in the season of payback? Just because you're reading this section of Scripture now at the beginning of the year, this is now the season of payback? Somehow you can apply that? I don't think so. Let's go to the next one. That was part one of Chuck Pierce. Here's part two. This is good. Let's go back. We've come into a new era. Last year was... Right, new era. That's something what Jeremiah Johnson said. We're in a new era. It's about good. returning to... The, you're fine. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, I can just cover it this way. We're, last year, a leaf won. See, and remember in God's time, we're transferring from one, but we won't be fully transferred into two, even though we're in the transference right now. What? Transferred from one to two, and you're in the transference? What are you talking about? Until Passover. Oh, until Passover. Still doesn't make any sense. So you're going through this inner processing of moving from uncovering the power of the parent root that has never been uncovered. That's what one's about. And coming into a renewed new covenant in the new place you're at. 
a new covenant in a new place. That's good and vague and very good for charismatic speak. In the new time you're at. Oh, new time also. And by Passover, we are now strengthened to build a house. So by Passover this year, it started last year, 5782, but we're in a transference time and it's going to come up at Passover and there'll be some sort of house involved. But right now we're starting on our homes. We're starting on the house. We're shifting into... Ooh, shifting. We're shifting into something. Here we go. The next structure, our wineskin. Wineskin, that's a good... It's a good misuse of uh, scripture sometimes. Of what we're about. The 13 colonies. The 13 colonies again? Did, does he know of all of the U.S. history? Should be shifting right now so that they know how to really advance into harvest by May of next year. So you want to be thinking like this. You want to be... I'm not sure I want to be thinking like this. Let's skip ahead a little bit. But the Lord will connect that into a new level of prosperity. And so, ah, prosperity, ah, good. All right, sounds good. Maybe he's selling a book also. With that, we have now, what this means is, uh, it's time to build the church again. We have not even been in a church season. We've been in the church season for 2,000 years. We've been building churches and growing churches and expanding churches for 2,000 years. We have ju we're just transitioning into this church. It doesn't mean we haven't had a church. It means that now we will take on the identity that God has for us for the future. And, and we'll be better than what we've been in the past. And This is all vague speak that means nothing. Means nothing. Let's skip ahead a little bit in this, in this one. Let's see what else we got. You know last night God opened a revelatory window. Wait, he opened a revelatory window? Show me the passage of scripture aside from the open heavens misused passage that, that God talks about opening revelatory windows. You have to keep that revelatory window open. And show me the passage of scripture that tells you you have to keep it open and how you're supposed to keep it open. Some revelatory window. The moment the Lord speaks something to you, grab hold of it. How you grab hold of words? Don't keep waiting for him to speak. Just grab hold of what he said. And then you'll move from there, and before long, your window is huge. And it's like the growth of the hole in the ozone. It's getting bigger. And your window of revelation is defining your sphere of authority. Now that's a okay. That means that means nothing. All right, let's go to somebody else. You can't handle him. Oh, speaking of can't handle, uh, let's take a look at this. My guest, a prophetic general. That's a good Pentecostal charismatic word that we've invented. Uh, prophetic general gathered 100 of the most accurate prophets of the world to tell what or if you paid attention at all they messed up COVID and they messed up the election maybe he meant to say inaccurate God will do in 2022 next I'm so excited about the timing of this show and the guest of this show Cindy Jacobs, she's just finished. All right, Cindy the mouth Jacobs, of two or three, here she is. Let every word be established. Uh, was found, uh, a scripture found in Isaiah 64, 1 and 2. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, and spoke to our group, and he said, I am about to make the nations tremble at my presence. My goodness. I am going to roar out of Zion. The, yeah, this is God saying that. Yeah. Um, Sid, I'm not really sure about that. I don't think that's what God said to them. This is not how prophecy works anymore. No, it's not like me or Cindy saying. No, I think it's what Cindy and her prophets came up with. Yeah. God saying that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I look at it this way, Cindy. The devil's made his... All right, let's, uh, let's see what else. This is a long one, so let's skip up through a little bit. A lot of bad stuff. Even in the U.S., and I'm sure you recognize this. I know you're watching from all over the world. It'll happen for you, too. But the Lord said the difference between what we call the sheep and goat states are those that are righteous and are those that are unrighteous. It's going to be so evident. The light and the dark, the contrast. And, and uh, Chuck Pierce gave a word about conflict coming in spring. And that there's going to be conflict, conflict could be war. You know, uh, I, I have been prophesying for some time. There's always conflicts. Conflicts coming in spring. If anybody gets a conflict, they're going to think Chuck Pierce is right. There's a conflict all the time. Is it war? Could be a war anywhere in the spring. Could be anything. Could be uh, anything from a war to a school board fight. Um, that China would arise. In fact, the Lord spoke a word to me that the COVID is a was a Chinese Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that literally, you know. It what? 
began to undermine and that, that, that China was militarizing during that season. And I have sent words into different people administrations in the past, you know, that said, you know, China would try to gobble up Taiwan, then go for Korea, Vietnam, and Japan, and then the world if we declared detente. Uh, you, you know, you can see the whole strategy. All right, let's skip ahead. I don't know what she's talking about. We are going to come up higher. Upgrades, upgrades. God, we're going to come up higher. Upgrades, upgrades. Tell me the Bible verse that talks about upgrades. Than we have ever walked before. I mean, so if you're listening to this and you hear these things, God loves a good challenge because that's when he manifests his glory. When you said the word new upgrade, I, I, I'm a feeler. And the presence. <laughs> You know Sid Roth's a feeler because he doesn't use his brain to use any discernment to vet these people on his program. God went zoom. <laughs> I think I need you to pray for us to have that new upgrade. Let's you do right? it. Yeah, let's there is nothing in scripture that says you need to pray for a new upgrade. Well, I don't even Okay, let's let's see what her prayer is. Let's do it. Is. Now, you get ready because I'm going to pray for you, but you need to get ready to receive. Uh, so, Father, pray. in the name of Jesus, I pray for upgrades. Upgrades in faith. I release new measures of faith. Wait. She went from praying to releasing I, I'm not sure that's a biblical, a biblical model. Come on, you have to cooperate with it. Say, I take it. I take no, we're not going to repeat it. And, and just say, I'm going to have everything I need, everything you need. If persecution everything comes. Everything I need. Yeah, everything. Yeah, if persecution comes, oh, God's going to say, now move over here because they're coming yeah. here. Or move this way. Or if, you know, or if, or if things get. She prayed for two and a half seconds and stopped. This is no prayer. This is no biblical prayer, Cindy Jacobs. It's expensive. You're gonna, the Lord's going to say, now invest in this, and I'm going to show you. The thing is, no more lazy Christians. No more lazy Christians. Every day, you're going to need to engage your faith to be an overcomer. God will posture you for greatness. God will posture you for blessing. And God's going to posture us for greatness and blessing. Man, that really tickles your ears, doesn't it? But I'm not sure that's what the Bible says. Uh, is what is uh, there for believers. So let's just see here. Let's just jump ahead. Uh. Call now to get Cindy Jacobs brand new and uh, exclusive uh, four part audio CDs. Right. What if you could make a full time living online? Call, call now for her her, uh, her books and her CDs. Four CDs. They'll tell you they'll tell you everything the prophet said. But you got to call now. That's. Um, that sounds a little bit like Gnosticism, where they have secret words of knowledge for you, uh, but you have to you have to get it, and only special people received it, and you have to listen to hear it uh, and get it a special word. All right, let's move on. Here's Hello, Sid Roth here with Troy Brewer, and uh, Troy, uh, I have dubbed a new name for you, and you said, well, there's people that know time more than me. I'm going to call you the time man, because <laughs> every time I talk to you, it's involving time. It's involving calendars. Um, yeah, and he shouldn't be doing that. Uh, for instance, we are now in the Jewish year 5782. Doesn't matter. That started this year. I know the date because it's my birthday also. September wow. 7th is when the Jewish New Year started. Uh, and so it's September 7th, 2021. And on the Gregorian calendar, which the rest of the world operates under, uh, we are entering into 2022. So um, it's, it's the Jewish year is 5782, the rest of the world is 2022, but tell me of the difference in the two calendars. Why do we need two calendars? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, number one, we need all the help that we can get to stay in sync with the heart of King Jesus. No, you don't need a calendar or special hidden messages from a Jewish calendar. You have the word of God. That's the help you have. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Troy, you don't need this. Yes. You know, I, I, we need to be people that are led by the Spirit. Uh, Brother said, you know, it's a great curse to be out of sync. You know, whenever Jesus showed up, he said, look, you missed your day of visitation. And he also says this. And Misapplied scripture? And, uh, over in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, it says that when you're under a curse, in the morning you'll say, I wish it was evening. And in the evening, you'll say, I wish it was morning. So it's a curse to be out of sync. That doesn't have to do with that getting out of sync of the times and the seasons. And the Lord, the Lord wants us to live with him. That just has to do with not wanting to deal with the pain that you're in. From moment to moment, from day to day, here a little, there a little, line upon line and all of that. Yeah, you know, you know what I, f I found out, right, Troy? Well, let's skip ahead Even to some more. place so that I can visit you with a new layer of a certain narrative, right? So you can't separate time, space, any of those things. The Lord wants us at the right place at the right time, again, for the right miracle to happen. So, Sid, getting back. For the right miracle to happen. All right. To your question about why do we need two calendars and what's the difference between the two of them? Well, we know that our Hebrew calendar from our Hebrew brothers and sisters, the, the prophetic marker for that one is the moon and it begins at nighttime and carries on all the way through the night and then it goes through the day. We know that our Gregorian calendar, the prophetic marker for it is the sun and it begins at sun up and it. 
So what? Ends right again at the next sunup. And one is like God speaking to one group of one group of people. The other is just like the Lord speaking to another group of people. Jesus said that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also in the stars. Jesus himself declared that. That's not what this means. Talking, talking about the Jewish year 5782 has nothing to do with that. And in fact, in the 14th verse of the book of Genesis, he says, he says, on the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon and stars. And then he says, and he created them from signs. See Seems a little like astrology, Troy. Doesn't seem good. Doesn't seem good. Seasons, days, and years. So it's supposed to be for prophetic timing. When God no, it doesn't say it's for prophetic timing. It's not for the prophets to misuse for their own benefit. God speaks through the sun. Brother Sid, he's talking to the nations. All right, he's not talking to the nations. Let's skip to ahead. Wow, this one is really long. Uh, let's just go ahead here. Now, I need you to, to explain to us the importance of biblical numbers. Uh, the fact, like many people aren't aware, that in the Hebrew alphabet, it's not just a letter, but it's also a number. This is great charismatic. Uh, this is a common thing in the charismatic movement to, to do what they're about to do. But why... why why are you so interested in the numbers? How, have, how is this something that just this generation has found? Or have we been interested in numbers all along in the Bible? Well, all throughout the centuries, it's been one of the major voices of God. And that, and we know that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, upon the many waters. And one of the great voices of the Lord is how things are measured, how things are numbered, how things are weighed, all those things, all the way. The voice of the Lord is the word of God and Jesus Christ, his only begotten son throughout the word of God, those things actually glorify the Lord. I do not believe that there's any power in numbers at all. I'm not a numerologist. Really? Not a numerologist? Then maybe you need to kind of abandon this whole track and maybe cancel this video. I am just someone who loves King Jesus. I love him so much. And the weights of the measures, even the very hairs of our head are numbered, right? And just throwing in random scripture to try to support some sort of point. It doesn't it doesn't support what they're doing. The numbers of the stars are all numbered. Everything is weighed and numbered and it all glorifies the Lord. With but it's not doesn't mean it's prophetic. It's a special language of the Lord. So you mentioned that in the Hebrews, among the Hebrews. Just because there's order doesn't mean there's a special language or there's a special prophetic message. Every single, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. All 22 actually have three different meanings. One is a phonic sound, like any, any letter in any alphabet. The other one is a numerical value. And then, the, and then the third one is actually a prophetic picture. So all three of those, if you're willing to learn that language, God will speak through those. Now, when it comes to the... Again, if you're willing to learn that language or listen to Troy or somebody else that has it, it, again, Gnosticism, like some sort of secret hidden message from God, Paul says that the secrets that were hidden have now been made known. There are no more secrets. It is plain in the Word of God through the person of Jesus Christ. This is not something that the church The miracle language is like, it's real simple, Sid. You know, on this side of the world, we do one, two, three, we have numerals. Right. But our Hebrew brothers and sisters, they don't have that. They actually have the A means a one, a B, C, the B means a two, it goes to 10, then it jumps to 20, 30, and then, then when it gets to 100, it goes 100, 200, 300, and 400. And what that means is every single name that is in Hebrew is also a number. Every single word is also a number. So when we come across a year like 5782, or on the Gregorian calendar, a year like, two, like 2022, there are words all the way through the word of God that have that same exact number that that's not prophetic. Don't read into that. Are a word for us today. There are actually uh, prophetic indicators all the way through the word. Like one of my favorite ones is this. Here we are entering into 222, and the word wisdom is in the Bible exactly 222 times. That's ridiculous. First of all, it's 22022. Wisdom is in 222 times. Those are two different numbers. Even if they were the same number, that's totally ridiculous. It means nothing. That's numerology. It's reading into something that's not there. That's totally absurd. Let's move on. Here's the Lance Wall now show. The matter is when when we wrote when I was writing about what's going to be happening in this season, which is really it's a prophecy for I'd say the season, the decade. That was the last book. Oh, the the decade. We wrote it's like a decade prophetic. And I said that the the key chapter is going to be two chapters in the Bible mm. in the little known prophet named Haggai, and Haggai, the prophet during the era of Cyrus, spoke to the Jewish people that had returned to Jerusalem to rebuild their temple. And he's, the Lord said, I'm shaking the heavens and the earth. I'm shaking the sea and the dry land. And so suddenly you run into this, um, this, this unique prophecy that describes global shaking and overturning of nations during the period of Cyrus. And shaking, that's a great word that prophets like to use. It means nothing, but if there's any sort of literal or figurative shaking, then they think they got something right. But it's vague, and I don't think it's in Scripture either. Not in the way they're using it. And... The prophecies occur during the Feast of Tabernacles, the month of Tabernacles. So it's all pregnant with end-time significance. 
But the word of the Lord that came by Haggai was that, that the reason why these devastations were coming upon the people that were returning to Jerusalem after their 70 years of captivity in Babylon was, uh, it was because they weren't building what God wanted them to build. They weren't, the church wasn't on God's building project. They were on their own. And so the Lord said, I'm basically putting a, uh, I'm shutting you all down, shutting the nations down, and I'm shaking everything. It sounds so much like what's going on with this COVID situation. And Wait, what? Is ha Haggai's shaking is a prophecy for a COVID America, situation? Uh, is the preeminent Gentile nation. Mm. And uh, Jesus did say that Jerusalem will be trodden under the foot of men until, until uh, the time of the Gentiles is um, coming to an end. And then... Lance likes to sneak in the importance of the United States in some of his prophecies. In, uh, and really in 1967, as Jerusalem came back into the orbit of the state of Israel and the Jewish people, that was the fulfillment of a prophetic timeline. When Jesus said, now, because, now we enter the decline of the Gentile era. I remember Pat Robertson years ago, year 2000, he wrote, going to the new millennium. The United States is the top of the pyramid of Gentile nations. We are the global economic power with banking. We're the global military power projecting our system of law. Um, in, in terms of contractual, everyone has to work with the American and Western idea of contractual relationship, rule of law. And basically, America projected its Gentile power dominance up until the period in which our um, Cyrus, Trump, was removed from office. And I think... Whoa, okay, we're equating Trump with Cyrus. That was pretty common in the, the era, era where the, all the prophets decided that Trump was going to get reelected and they were wrong. They were misapplying scripture to Trump. Flawlessly removed. Mm -hmm. They were actually taking it as far as using scripture that was intended for Jesus and Jesus alone and applying it for Trump. Blasphemy on the part of the prophets. Let's, uh, let's see what else he's got. Skip ahead. Back on, on the woke, corrupt, virus-ridden condition of America, which comes about because of false doctrine, false theology, authorizing false spirits, demons, to take over the high places. So the gatekeepers occupy the gates, human gatekeepers. Gatekeepers occupy the gates. First, under the influence of demons and principalities, they occupy academia, they occupy Wall Street, they occupy arts, they occupy media, and God's... He's listening to Seven Mountains, another invented charismatic thing that's not in Scripture. Bringing the battering ram down, bam, 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 to push back. You're seeing it through the uh, school boards. It's happening not in the universities, but it's happening in the local schools, which is in, um, in uh, what we saw with... All right, let's see. He's got a two-part program. There's a lot here. Let's, uh, let's jump to the next one and see... His co-host starts on this one. Like, you know, Thirty minutes away, and I, I didn't know he was saying that. You know how I think the Holy Spirit works. This is like the millennial version, but um, you know, like when you download a podcast. The millennial version on how the Holy Spirit works. How about the scriptural version on how the Holy Spirit Last works? Downloaded like a new operating system for your cell phone, and we all get to download at the same time. I kind of feel like Holy Spirit's like that. So like you. Uh no, I don't think so. An update. You can get like get the updated version. Like he could speak the same thing to multiple people multiple times. But that's my well, and, tech, and, tech millennial and this and it works the other way too. And that's where I think a lot of prophets miss, miss the boat, mm. because you could be prophesying with each other. Oh, prophets miss the boat. You're still doing it, Lance. But you're hearing each other as prophets. Sure. And then it kind of, it confirms that bias we were talking about. That's true. The prophets, one said it, a couple of them said it. They all thought it would be great if Trump was reelected. So they all got on board with that. Nobody heard from the, from the Lord directly. And they all just kind of fed each other and decided that was what was going to happen. And they all got it wrong that he was going to be re-elected, elected for a second consecutive term. Talking about yeah. on our earlier broadcast, which is, um, you know, All 2022. Right. Um, we're talking about Here we macro go. level. Now let's talk about micro, about you, what yeah. God wants to do with you, Great. <clears throat> what, what you're called to do. Mm. And I got this last night, and I was going to post it, and then I was going to do a Facebook, you know, message. I'll probably do it tonight after Flashpoint, mm. because it, it, it came as an aha to me that one of the principles, like I felt the Lord was going to give me 10 principles for recalibrating for your destiny in 2022. Mm. 10 principles for recalibrating for your destiny? Oof. Getting exactly on the point of the script where God wrote your role in for your destiny in this next year. Destiny, that's a good new agey word that Christians have usurped, unfortunately. Let's see if we can get to some of the meat of this. We're accessing more clarity because our, we have harmony. We have a accord, respect for each other and trust. And if you have trust and you have respect, you have the minimum requirement to be able to access the mind of Christ. And what I'm saying to you is in 2022, I've given you three biblical examples of you will have an updated authority, an updated identity, an updated rank, and an updated uh, assignment. That was four. Updated authority, updated identity, updated rank, updated assignment. It's like an upgrade. We got an upgrade on all those. That means nothing. An updated authority, an updated assignment, it's vague. It means nothing. It, you, could, you could see that easily because it's so vague and means nothing when you are in the environment with the right people. So it becomes important 
that you start asking the Lord, who are the people? Because there might be some there that you're missing. And mm -hmm. Jesus spent all night praying. Mm -hmm. This is the Son of God. Spent all night praying to get it right with 12 names. He had to get 12 words of knowledge, who to invite. And he probably knew who they were. I mean, he was hanging around Galilee. It's not a big place. And it was the same, you know. All right, let's keep skipping ahead. Those are four big things, vague and mean nothing. All right. Let's see, uh, let's go to 24. For your business. Think about this. God's blessing is on what he's doing, and he invites you to join him. And if he happens to be in your business this year, then it's the time to join God in your business. But he might be in your family this year, in which case you better join God in your family. God is everywhere. He wants to work in your business, in your family, in your school. The point is this. is a better way to say it. But there's a big difference between getting God to bless what you're doing and having God reveal to you what he's already blessed. Because if you join God in what he's doing... Sounds profound. Is it? Also, is it biblical? I don't know. Let's skip ahead. Let's go to the end. How could anyone in the presence of that level of supernatural attestation cook up a, an idea to, uh, to steal money from the bag and not know that that prophet probably knows what you're doing? Totally. Once you, once you don't get it right regarding finances, it affects your apparatus for discerning revelation and processing it. The only thing we know about Judas was he was a thief. The way you handle money is how you handle revelation. Hmm. The way you handle money is the way you handle revelation. And if, and if you're, if you're generous with your finance, you probably are flowing in an abundance of access to revelation. So if you give a lot of money, hopefully to his program, then you'll have greater impartation of revelation that seems like a trick and if you're and if you're penurious and stingy and shallow i'll bet you that you may have a lot of knowledge but a hard time making it manifest because there's not a lot of grace working in your life to show up and it's frustrating when you got knowledge and it doesn't work so and i've seen that i've seen legalistic christians that just are cranky they know the word enough to correct you but they don't have any of it manifesting and they don't have they don't have any of the word manifesting can you get me scriptures on what that means vision either so here's what i want you to do if these words are ministering to you for your sake do this uh, oh for my sake oh great because you know it's so funny thing with a non with uh with, oh can i do this for a non-profit yeah, yeah i can do this but with a non-profit my income is, is set it's like they define it in a non-profit this isn't coming right. to me this is coming into the ministry sure so yeah it goes it's going out to, the to minister to other people but if this ministry is blessing you if these teachings are helping you so into the ministry and out of the ministry that's that's classic you want to sow a seed and you'll have greater impartation uh, i don't i don't think so he ends by saying this is the year of awakening, wake of harvest, and, and all right, let's go on. We got two ones left here. Here's our favorite Honeydew, Dr. Honeydew Bunsen, whatever his name is from the Muppets. But what's really interesting, my husband actually, we were praying Bunsen Honeydew I think. into 2022, and I don't know who this person is, Krista, Elisha. Ooh, Elisha, that's a good prophetic name. Here we go. God was sharing with us this important importance of unity. If you look up 2022 in Strong's Concordance, the two um, words that come up are to pour upon and the... Wait, she looked up 2022 in Strong's, in Strong's Concordance? Mountains. There's, I and really the feel in 20... Wait. She looked at 2022, the Strong's 2022, which was applied by Mr. Strong to a word. And she picked, she found the two that were, I guess, the New Testament and the Old Testament. They mean the pour upon and the mountains. And so this is somehow the prophetic word for 2022. Holy smokes, this is way off. 22, we're going to see a, a very dividing line um, with the word of the Lord um, separating who is truly his and who is not. And Steve just always listens to the people just nods as if they're saying things that make any sense. But I, he's just, there, there he is. He looks like he's sleeping. And um, the, even, right, so if you look ahead. up 2022 oh, in Strong's Concordance, yeah, let's yeah. Do it, the two words that show up are um, the word for outpouring, outpouring or to pour upon. And the other word in the Hebrew is hill or mountain. And the Lord told me that this year we're going to see anointing and we're going to see outpourings happen on gatherings where people are dwelling together in unity. No, I don't think the Lord told you that. 
He didn't base some sort of prophetic word on the Strong's number 2022. That's absurd. All right, let's see. What else we got? Let's see if this gets any in our decree. Our, the keys are in our decree. The keys are in our decree. Is, it, is that a Bible verse? I don't, I, don't, I don't remember that one. And whatever we speak, we will see. Oh, whatever we speak, we shall see. Ah, that's that's a good name it and claim it thing. That's, oh, that's bad philosophy, unbiblical belief. And that's, that's been good. the big theme that's for not me for this year. No. And, and a challenge. Um, and then no. I did, I felt like the Lord wanted me to share about a vision that I had about this sword. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of no. prophetic intercessors that watch this broadcast. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that this is, that there is a new weapon that God is releasing to his body. Um, God held back a weapon for over 2,000 years and he's finally giving to the body? I, I don't think so. All right. Um, that's a little bit absurd. Strong's Concordance. Let's go to the last one here. Another one here. And when I first released this word, man, some people got in the religious head. And the word was 2022 will be about. Okay, first of all, this is Hank Kuhneman. He can't get Trump out of his head. He can't, con he keeps prophesying that Trump is going to be elected or get back in, or he can't get the political nature out of his head. He can't speak just base scriptures to Christians without bringing politics in what he's saying. It just happens over and over again. 2022 will be about you. And people say, oh, it's never. 2022 will be about you. Wow, that's nice. Never about us. It's always about Jesus. Well, if you think religious. Uh, yeah, it is always about Jesus. Then you're going to discount yourself. Mm. We have that doesn't mean I'm discounting myself. I am nothing without but Christ. We have a crucified, bloody, beaten Christ. Okay, because he made it about us. He's now exactly. the ascended Christ. No, it's always for his glory. And it's not about us. Exactly. Bear scars. God so loved us, the world. And there are times when we focus on God. Seems like a little off. God, that he does make it about us. And so the Lord said to me back in 2018 and 19, he said that there would be a, 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 a pandemic, a plague that would hit the earth. Wait, you have a prophecy from 2018 and 19 that there would be a pandemic or a plague? Let's find that video. Let's find that publication that that actually happened. I don't know about that. It would be like in the days of Israel and Egypt. And he said the decade would start off harsh, which it has. Well, that's true about Those that. Those prophecies are happening. But he said we'd end up in rest. And God said because of the harshness of the season that we've been in, he's going to make it about us. He's going to make it about you that are watching because of the harshness of the season. Now, does God ever make it about us? Absolutely. Mark chapter 10, this is your homework, verses 46 through like 51, where he meets a man, blind Bartimaeus, who was crying out to God. It wasn't a squalling and a bawling. It was a cry of covenant. And it was, thou son of David. A cry of covenant? Which is covenant. Have mercy upon me. And uh, God, Jesus stopped called Bartimaeus over to him and said these words to him. And this is the word for 2022. Because there's going to be warfare in 2022, I'm telling you. That was about God being divine and being able to heal somebody. That was about Jesus and not Bartimaeus. And the enemy's going to try to bring chaos to our cities. And we need to, that's why we need to mix it with prayer. Okay? He, he wants to spoil celebration. Whether He wants to spoil celebration. Oh, too bad. It doesn't sound fun. be you or nationally or worldwide. And we need to stay on it. He asked Jesus a question in Mark 10. He, he, he asked Blind Bartimaeus a question. What do you want me to do for you? Notice, here's the, here's, the, here's the thing. What do you want me to do? If you want it to be about you in 2022, make it about him. That's why Jesus said, what do you want me to do? Lastly, four things are going to define 2022. Seems like a little bait and switch there, Hank. Are you ready? First of all, you're going to say 2020 true. Oh, he's rhyming. 2020 you, 2020 true. I'm not sure this is a true prophetic word. God is still exposing corruption, lies about vaccines, about the virus, about what's really been taking place, shutdowns, variants, all kinds of things. The election. <laughs> the election, can't let it go. God's still going to pull the covers off. He's not done. And so it's going to be 2020 true. You watch how the spirit of truth is going to move strong to do what Psalm 37 says. God's Steve's just nodding along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's nothing going on in his head. Going to deal with and cut off the evildoers. Verse 13 of Psalm 37 says he's going to laugh. Why? Because he knows he sees their day coming. This is what we're going to So he pulled out a psalm and just directly applied it to 2022. Let's see in 2022. It's going to be 2020 new. <laughs> 2020 new. Okay. 2020 new. Good. New things are going to come. Bl 
Oh, new things. Great. Find Bartimaeus, Mark chapter 10, got a new season because he was... <laughs> a new season. Stop it. ...specific with the question Jesus asked. What do you want me to do for you? He didn't say, oh, I'm not worthy. It's not about me. He said, uh, Jesus... All right, Hank. What else we got? ...to study, right? I don't know if you should mix the two together. But Alabama was playing Auburn, Steve. is a great game, and I was caught up in the game, and I had my Bible, and I was studying, and also heard the Spirit of the Lord. And he said, you tell the people... 2022 shall not only be 2020 true, 2020 new, but it shall be the year that the king remembers. Whoa. Oh. And if you... <laughs> Steve, whoa. Whoa, he's like Keanu Reeves there. Whoa. Wait, 2022 is the year the king remembers as if God has forgotten us for any other year. What are you talking about? Study when the king remembered in the scripture, I'm talking about King David, when he remembered a crippled, lame man named Mephibosheth of the house of Saul, who it wasn't his fault that tragedy came to him. All right, then he's misapplying scripture. Not every scripture in the Old Testament can just be overlaid to today. All right, let's see where he ends this. The coming year uh, on, the, on the English calendar, whatever they call it, the, there's a word they use. Gregorian or something. I think it's yeah, Gregorian. it's too big for me, you know. <laughs> and, yeah, and so um, you, have to, you have to mix Thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you you're not done with President Trump. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord. Wait. He jumps straight into a prayer. I thank you that you're not done with President Trump. He can't let it go. Or that no man is going to steal this nation from you. I thank you, God, that the king remembers me, but remembers Donald Trump, remembers America. Lord, I thank All right. I don't think we need to go into that. Let's see what else you got, Hank. Let's just jump to the end here. The reversal and the rebirthing of a new season for you. And I'm telling you in America, we are coming into... Wait. Never happen because of the reset, the reversal, Re and the rebirthing of a new season. Reset, rebirthing, and reversal. Uh, no. And for you, and I'm telling you, in America, we are coming into this. It's what Cat has saw. So, oh, Cat, yes, uh, the lady that makes regular trips to heaven. I don't think so. Accurately, and that is, it's what I've seen. That no matter the harshness of the season, that has caused a scarring, pain. Come on, loss. Some of you, you know, somebody that has died from from something. You know, maybe it was COVID or whatever. Just like those nine. They, sat, they were satisfied for healing, but they still had a reminder of their pain, their hurt. Their... He's talking about this leper story that he went through, the, of the story of the 10 lepers. Scarring and their loss because they, they neglected something that we got to be careful. And that is, we cannot stop giving thanks for what God said. President Trump, United States of America, new season, new day, we're going to celebrate. And when you do, a wholeness will not only come upon you, but it's going to come over the nation. We need to celebrate the fact that we have been born again by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to celebrate. And nothing, no election, no politician, no false prophecy, no COVID should take away our joy in our eternal salvation. These are not true prophets. Let's end it there. I think that's enough. There's a, a lot of 2022 prophecies out there. These are just some of the big names. Uh, that like to give prophecies on a regular basis. Um, there's one with Robin Bullock, which I can't even handle at this point. We're not going to even do that. So from time to time, we add people to the no-go list. And those people that you saw, we've added Sid Roth. It's supernatural to the no-go list. We added Steve Schultz and the Elijah list to the no-go list already. We actually did a program about 20 prophets who got 2020 wrong when those that got COVID and those that got uh, President Trump being reelected wrong. We ha we highlighted Lance Wall now there. We highlighted Hank Kuhneman there. So in light of those being already taken today, we'll turn our attention to Cindy Jacobs. She pulled together all the, these hundred prophets, she said, before she got on to uh, Sid Roth's program. And they had all these words and they she claimed that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to them, and she had these words for us that we needed to hear, these, again, Gnosticism, and she orchestrated this, and, and she teaches that it, she has these secret things that you need to hear, and then you need to buy her four CDs to hear them. This is not biblical. This is not prophetic. This, Cindy Jacobs is not a prophet, and the words that she said um, in the name of the Lord for 2022 should not be considered as coming from the mouth of the Lord. She's on the front lines of false prophecy and teaching. And because of those things, and because she got false prophecy wrong here at the beginning of 2022, we're going to add Cindy Jacobs to the no-go list today.
Well, hopefully that was um, educational, maybe slightly enjoyable. Thanks for joining me today on our biblical quest for truth so we can stand strong in every wind and wave of teaching. Please like, subscribe, share this video, and until next time, may your life be governed by the gospel of Jesus Christ each and every day. Amen.